Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Bernice Fonto Senior and Wellness Center. It is my pleasure to see my comrades here again today. We have been a little bit distracted with remote meeting, but believe you me, we are still very active. My name is Leopold Clark, and I've been coming to the Bernice Fonto Center, Fontenot Center, for five years. When I retired from DC government in 2007, I wanted to make sure I stayed active and connected to my community. So when the Bernie's Fontenot Wellness Center opened just about 11 years ago, I knew it was going to be one of the places I would target. I did not realize how much of a resource it was going to be for me. So when I did get involved five years ago, I was extremely satisfied and continued to be, but then came COVID. However, I must congratulate our operators for keeping us connected and motivated. So now we're looking forward to coming back in and enjoying the, all the amenities here for us at the center. During my time here, I've been able to make lifelong connections with neighbors, learn new hobbies, engage in exciting activities, and make my health a priority. We are incredibly grateful for the programs and resources our wellness center and the mayor continues to provide for older adults like myself in our community. And that's why it gives me so much pleasure to welcome and introduce our mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Welcome, Mayor Bowser. Yes, my well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is just wonderful to, to see you here, to be in Ward 1 right here on Georgia Avenue uh, at the Bernice Fontenot Senior Wellness Center here in Ward 1. Uh, I'm a little out of breath because I was just in a very tough workout session upstairs. Uh, you have an uh, excellent instructor, wonderful friends who are participating in a beautiful, beautiful workout room. Uh, and I hope that more people uh, will discover Bernice Fontenot Center here on Georgia Avenue uh, and our six wellness centers uh, throughout Washington, D.C. I want to acknowledge your uh, director, Ms. Singleton. Give her a big round of applause. I also uh, want to acknowledge the director of the D.C. Office on Aging and, and, Dackle, and Community Living. You noticed that I paused uh, because all the time I was in government as a war for council member and several years as mayor, it was the D.C. Office on Aging. And thanks to your advocacy and council member Anita Bonds, who introduced the legislation, uh, you became your own department. So it's the Department on Aging and Community Living. Uh, and your director is this very young Laura Newland. <laughs> And uh, when we were appointing uh, the director, uh, I knew Laura, Laura was the best fit. And I say, Laura, you know, you're going to have to convince the seniors that you know something about them uh, and know something about what they need uh, and are a fierce advocate for them. And looking back over Laura's years of service with us, I know she was the exact right fit uh, because she works wakes up thinking about seniors uh, and works hard for them every single day. Uh, we had a time these last two years, haven't we? I want to congratulate DC seniors, however, because when we asked everybody to get vaccinated, you did not wait, you did not hesitate, and that's why you have over a 95% vaccination rate right here in Washington, DC. So give yourselves a round of applause. 
Now, some still need to get their third shot, get their booster. Uh, so keep working on that. You can go to COVID centers around D.C. You can also call us and we'll come right to your home. If we want to schedule booster shots here, we can work on that so everybody gets their booster. Uh, we came into this pandemic a strong community, uh, and we're going to come out on the other end a strong community. We've lost uh, loved ones, I certainly have. We've lost connections, uh, but we are going to work uh, to getting all of those things back. And part of our commitment is making sure that we have a strong budget uh, that acknowledges how people can live and age well in Washington, D.C., and live in Washington, D.C., period. I know you're concerned about yourselves. You're probably also concerned about family members, grandchildren, loved ones that you want to make sure can enjoy what you've enjoyed in this city. Um, raising your families, buying a home, enjoying um, the fruits of your labor and now your retirement. So stay connected to us through the Office on Aging, through Channel 16. How many people saw um, our Fit DC for Seniors in the Morning on Channel 16. Nothing like what you have upstairs, I'll tell you that. Uh, and also the connections that I know that Laura and her team have been working on for seniors um, to get iPads and to get, stay connected uh, using iPads. You probably know that I submitted a balanced budget to the council a couple of weeks ago, $19.5 billion. And a huge portion of that budget is for Health and Human Services, $5.7 billion, uh, in fact. And what that represents is our real commitment to equitable spending in the district and spending that makes sure we have a strong safety net, but also uh, investments uh, in our growth. So people in the District of Columbia have access to the huge opportunities that are available in this city. Uh, one thing that we know is staying connected and getting to the places that you need to get is important for seniors. So we've added $1 million for ch expanded transportation access through our connector card program. Uh, we also know, as I mentioned, that the tablets have been important connections, not just with DC government, but with your banks and increasingly with your doctors, with how you get medication, how you can have food delivered and other goods delivered to your home. So we're adding $2.6 million uh, for data plans and tablets for qualifying seniors. And we're also very focused on how we will end senior hunger in Washington, D.C. So additional $750,000 for the distribution of grocery cards uh, to seniors who need them. These are just some of the investments uh, that you will hear us talking about uh, related to seniors. Uh, but we know so much of everything that we do is concentrated on how you will live well, uh, including making sure your communities are safe uh, we have an investment in making sure our police department has the officers that it needs and will allow us to hire 350 more police officers. And no offense to the gentleman, you heard the chief, he wants to concentrate on hiring more women in MPD uh, and more DC residents. So those are a few things on our minds. Uh, I want to thank you for all of the questions. Uh, that you submitted through our senior budget town hall uh, and all of the questions that you will continue uh, to ask us. So with that, I'm going to ask Director Newland to say a few more um, things about the work of DACL, and then we'll take a few questions. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, and thank you, Bernice Fontenot. Y'all are always uh, so welcoming, and this is really the perfect place uh, to show the mayor what our wellness centers are all about, which is, yes, hard work, but also some fun while you're doing it, uh, and a great place just to hang out, make friends, and eat a great meal. Uh, it is so great to be here in person. These last two years, as we all know, have been really challenging uh, because we have been more limited in how we connect with each other. So we, as you know, we've been focused on 
virtual connection, phone connection, um, and neighbors checking on neighbors. And I think these past two years have really taught us that sometimes new technology isn't what is needed to build strong community. That sometimes what it takes is just a community coming together. And that's exactly what Bernice Fontenot did. And DACL and the mayor supported the community coming together through technology, but it was really you all who came together and said, we need to support each other. So now, here we are, two years later, and I am so excited that you all are going to be figuring out what does life look like now? We are going to be creating it together. And I'm so excited to see that because I think the possibilities have opened up so much. During my tenure here, I remember my first year, uh, our budget was less than $40 million. This budget in the FY23 mayor's budget is about $55 million. So the investments have increased every year and that's because you all have shown up and said, let's do this for our friends and neighbors. This is what I'm interested in. And so every year the mayor has invested more and more in activities like fitness, but also activities throughout the city in those wards that don't have access to a senior wellness center like this one. So I wanna encourage you all, please keep coming in person. Please, please keep coming in person. There's really something special about being in person uh, that you don't necessarily get if you're home alone. So I just wanna make sure that no matter what you do, that you're involved in your community, that you make an effort to say hi to your neighbor, that you make an effort to go to the extra cla exercise class here or somewhere else, rather than just rely on all the virtual activities uh, because it is going to make our community better. So thank you so much uh, for uh, hosting us today. And Mayor, thank you so much for your continual investments. And we are so, so excited uh, that we are going to be figuring this all out this year and next year. Um, and we're gonna have some great things to talk about. Okay, so with that, I know we have some members of the press. Uh, I'll take their questions and then I'll take some community questions, press questions. Hi, Mayor Bowser. Hi. I'm Shanika with WTVM 25. So recently I saw this uh, poll. It said Maryland is top one of the, well, top 10, one of the worst states to retire. And I know that you talked about budgeting and everything like that. What are you doing to, so you're not on the top list of the worst states to retire. Oh, you well, guys I'm aren't glad on there. you recognize that you're in Washington, D.C. <laughs> uh, and we, we put our seniors on, on the top of the list. Uh, and the things that I mentioned um, make communities great for people of all ages and seniors. So let me just mention a couple of those um, things. First, uh, seniors want safety. Um, and so that's why you will hear me continuously talking about making sure our communities are safe, the police have what they need, the violence interrupters have what they need, um, that we're all doing our jobs to keep our community safe. So that's important. Seniors want safe housing. Uh, and we know uh, that we have seniors in Washington, D.C. who are longtime homeowners, longtime renters, seniors who are looking to downsize, you name it. Uh, we have people in all categories. Uh, one thing that uh, Laura and I and the department have been focused on in the last seven years is a program called Safe at Home. What we know is the best senior housing is the housing you're living in, as long as it's safe and affordable for you. And that's why the Safe at Home program has provided grants um, up to like, what, what up to $6,000 so seniors can retrofit their homes so that they're safe um, for them. And we've served uh, thousands of seniors um, at this time. So the Safe at Home program is important. Here's another one that's really important, um, and that's to make sure that seniors don't get taxed out of their homes. Uh, and I've done a lot of work on that since I was a council member uh, in expanding the eligibility for our senior income tax program. Everybody knows about that, right? You do have to apply. 
Uh, you just tell the office on tax and revenue uh, that your household income is below 125 and you pay half of your tax bill. You pay half. Uh, now, there's a cap on that. Um, so it means your assessment can't go up or your tax bill can't go up more than 5% every year. What this budget proposes that I'm sending to the council is that it can't go up over 3% maybe or 2%. It can't go over 2% in a given year. And then you still pay half, okay? So keeping seniors uh, housing affordable means after years and years of paying their taxes that they don't have to pay the government as much. Uh, that's another way to keep folks in. I'll mention one more, even though there are a lot. Uh, and one more is our single family rehab program, which also allows seniors, uh, we've heard your feedback, we're making the program simpler um, to work with, and this will provide low cost uh, loans or grants to seniors to do major repairs on their home. And so that's, um, that's also um, key. I know I said that was the last one. Um, but we're also focused on this, and this is why we're here, and that's community. Uh, people, um, when they retire, they don't want to go and stay in their homes after having an active life in work and friendships and activity related to work. They want to have that same kind of community and activity and engagement um, and investment in their city um, that they always have had. And so um, we are very focused on how to build that community of seniors that are giving back meaningfully, engaging in meaningful ways, um, because they're such a, a key fabric uh, to who we are as Washingtonians. Um, and and that's, that's one of our values. And I think that's why people want to live here. Uh, and if they feel anxious about cost, that's why, because they don't want to move. They don't want to like retire somewhere. I want to retire at home. I want to retire at home in Washington, D.C. I have a long way, though. Don't get any ideas. Oh, I have a long, I have a lot of gas in me. Yes. Yes, ma'am. There's a lot of talk about needs for uh, mental health in, of all ages, but I think seniors, uh, particularly in, and particularly in loneliness, so much of what you're doing is addressing that. But do you have any um, particular uh, ambitions for increasing mental health uh, interdictions? Well, I, in um, isolation uh, is one of the focus areas for Director Newland since, since she started. In some ways, all of you here, um, we're kind of preaching to the choir. There's another group out there who won't come to our senior centers or haven't and haven't engaged in our activities. And so we want them to hear this message too because that's how we will begin uh, to combat isolation. Others um, that we're also very concerned about are caregivers. They're not here because they have duties at home. Uh, and I'm very, very concerned about uh, how we support them uh, in, in, in everything, uh, but how we support their mental wellness uh, as well. And so, uh, Director Newland, uh, do you want to talk about caregiving a little bit and our focus? Uh, so, caregiving is actually one of the major reasons why people can age in D.C. and live a good life. Uh, because family members or friends are taking care of people so that they can live at home. Uh, the stress of caregiving is incredible. Uh, for those of you who have d experienced caregiving, it is, it is a grind. And I think a lot of times people don't take care of themselves because they feel so focused on the other person. And so a lot of our programs focus on how do we get the caregiver to take care of themselves. So just like on an airplane, you put the mask on first and then you help your neighbor. And a lot of times caregivers don't do that. So our programs, we invest more than a million dollars citywide on providing respite for caregivers, on providing some financial support for caregivers, and connecting caregivers with each other. Because again, caregivers feel isolated, but you're not alone. There are so many other people who can provide that support. Um, and so our focus on community, our focus on making sure our community takes care of each other, we have that same lens in caregiver supports throughout the city. 
Okay. Uh, yes, Sam. So, Mayor, uh, I heard your answer to the tax question. Um, one of the things that uh, I guess I heard a real estate guy say once is that when you have certain tax increases, that's when a lot of these houses start going up for sale. They have to, to do that. And I know it's like you said 2%. Um, as I recall, D.C. is one of the jurisdictions that doesn't tax Social Security, as I recall. But um, what about the proposal that's come up before about just, you know, after a certain age income, no tax at all for property for senior citizens. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I have supported that in the past as a, as a member of council. Again, council member Bonds proposed it some years ago. I know it was um, changed, her proposal. I think that if you're over six, 75 of certain income, then you wouldn't pay any taxes. Um, and once again, I've been supportive of that. Uh, I think the the change is still a program in place for people 75 or older. I won't remember all of the details, um, but it's more limited in who qualifies. So that's it. But still, um, Sam, I think uh, a, a number of folks in here will be able to tell you the very significant tax benefits that are afforded um, seniors in the district. Uh, we do have a city where property values increase. And that's good and bad, right? It's good because as that value goes up, that's your money. That's your wealth that you can pass on, that you can tap into, like I sometimes do, to, to do something else that I need to do. People have tapped into the wealth to send their kids to college or to buy another home or to do any number of things. So you don't want to be in a city where the, the value of your property goes down. So that's why uh, we know all the things that we do in this city make sure we have robust property values. So our job now is to moderate the year-to-year -year impacts on our most vulnerable residents or on our residents like a lot of people here who worked all their lives, have a good pension, uh, but still have limited incomes. They're not growing. Uh, and so we don't, they don't want to see their tax bill grow 10% every year. Uh, we have a, a residential property tax cap of 10% every year. For seniors, it's 5%. When my budget proposal passes, that cap will be 2%. Uh, and then seniors still pay half. Okay? So that's, uh, that's what we're doing uh, to take care of seniors and their property. But that, so on top of, I already talked about the investments that they can make to keep up. Uh, this is another thing that we notice. Other people move in that have more money and still two incomes and still working and they gut their houses and they do all this. And then our seniors who are in limited income, they want to do that too. But they may not be able to do the same thing. So that's why we want, we have a program, single family rehab, that allows them to take care of um, safety issues first and foremost, but other issues in their home. So single family rehab and safe at home are also um, resources. Now I should also mention all of the other um, things that we're focused on, whether it's in our public housing properties who have developed for the first time an assisted living public housing development, uh, as well as a number of vouchers that the council and our administration have funded over the years um, for seniors uh, who need assistance with rent, uh, those vouchers also becoming available. So we have to concentrate on the whole spectrum of people. Um, we are, you know, if we're all lucky and blessed and all of those things, we're going to have more and more seniors in our city and more and more people who are living longer and longer and hopefully better and better so that we can take care of housing needs. We need to be very focused on it. So you're saying that um, it's limited to, if you're in this program, it's limited to 1% increase in your tax bill. Two. I thought you said two and they paid half. No, no, that's, I'm talking about something different. The increase is on the increase in your property value in your assessment. It's a little bit complicated. I'm happy to go through it with you. Um, but you, the, you're limited every year, everybody, with a 10% increase in their tax bill. That's regardless of the amount of the value that has gone up. For seniors, they're, right now, they're limited to a 5% increase in their tax bill. 
regardless of how much their value has gone up. What we are proposing is that they will be limited to a 2% increase in their tax bill, regardless of how much that it goes up. Now, the half is when a senior gets their bill, the senior um, property tax program means that they pay half of what the bill is. You follow me? You're, you're confusing things. 2% is the cap on the increase in the tax bill, the rate of increase. The senior property tax program for seniors of a certain income, it's like 150, I think, and below, they qualify for paying half of their tax bill. Are you signed up? Because every time I give this talk, there's somebody who's not getting the benefit that they deserve. It's a very simple six-question form that you get from the Office of Tax and Revenue. Ms. Singleton, please make sure that you have those forms here. Please. Okay. You, homestead helps. Homestead happens before anything else happens. If you are a resident owner, but you still get the senior property tax on top of that. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Singleton, can you please get those forms here and make sure? Okay. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Right. Where are we, Laura? So we are actually giving more choice to all of the wards. Um, we release funds to every ward uh, to do trips wherever they wanted. Um, so if Michelle hasn't talked to you about it, you will be soon, because I know everyone misses going to the Amish market. The only thing worth going to outside of DC. This only thing. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Want to have social workers back in the senior? Ms. Singleton, you want to talk about um, everything you have going on here? Help us to enroll in these programs that okay. you, you offer. Yes, ma'am. Because some of us need help with filling I got out it. the form. Absolutely. So, yeah. you, you can come up here, please. So, good morning, everyone. So, we do have um, a number of the forms and uh, information on the programs that are available. And a lot of it very much we thank our Commissioner on Aging for Ward 1 who ensures that we are in the know and that we have the applications and information available for the programs um, that you're interested in participating in. So was there another question about social workers back into the so this So we actually have a volunteer social worker who is available on Mondays. Um, she she's been volunteering for maybe seven or eight years now. Um, and she's available every Monday um, from 11, from 10 to 3. She is helping, and that is something we are definitely um, hoping to be able to expand. Um, we do have a social worker, a family support worker, who's available for the uh, program to help seniors who are interested in getting the booster vaccine through Mary Center. So there is a family support worker who will work with you with that. So um, we, we definitely have a need. And we do know that navigation is a huge issue. Not necessarily case management, but navigation. So we're here um, you know, soliciting volunteers and support in that area. And we're also here to help you as well. Terrific Inc. used to be my case management. And um, now they're not. Um, are we going to be able to get an organization an organization like um, Terrific Inc. to you come back and for, do what they do because war, war, they have war. saved my life along Amen. with the center. You know? um, so we brought case management into the Department of Aging and Community Living. So um, it just made sense from an equity and consistency point of view to make it a citywide service rather than a kind of bifurcated service where everyone got something a little different depending on what ward you lived in. So we transferred all of our cases from the community into our agency, but I'm happy to follow up with you because our, our service, um, you should have been contacted multiple times already, and so if you haven't been, then um, I'll make sure someone does. 
and I'm having some real problems with the management. It seems like it's a one-woman operation, and I need some help because I don't know what to do. You right. know, and I've been having some problems. I ain't gonna go on air with it, but I need to talk to somebody. Okay, okay. no problem. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, last question here. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm confused. 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 Confused festival and parade. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> June eleventh, I'm told. Okay, and see Dackel. They'll have a presence. Fantastic. And thanks for asking that question because it, it reminds me to remind you that DC is open. Uh, so the things that you're used to doing, festivals, restaurants, um our centers, government facilities are open. Uh, in most cases, masks are optional. What I might, from my observation, people keep their mask on, and that's fine, uh, because we we want to respect everybody's choice. Um, but feel free, vaccination is still our best defense. However, so get boosted. Getting boosted. Uh, is is really important, and you can also help us with our five to eleven year olds. Um, you will have a lot of influence on their parents, uh, and the five to eleven year olds is a is the age group that we're having the most difficulty with um, getting vaccinated. But to make sure kids can stay healthy, go back to school, and stay in school, and stay in camp, get back to normal, um, getting them vaccinated is important. So thanks for having me, Bernice Fontenot. Thank you.